coming out of executive session. No decisions uh, uh, are uh, were made or need to be made. So we are at uh, miscellaneous items. Uh, either uh, one of my fellow commissioners have any miscellaneous items they want to bring forward? No. Uh, then Jerry, it's up to you. We had Todd in here a couple weeks ago, and they were talking about the raising or changing the policy on sign-up sign bonuses. Or it was currently at thirty-five hundred dollars, I think, and they wanted to raise it to ten. And we've been had, and there was some. It, Mary, I think it was you that asked him for some more uh, uh, information, and he sent out some with the cities and the counties and. Some of them were 10, some of them were 75, some of them were lower than that. Because like the cities that were all the higher numbers and the yeah, counties. cities. So right. it, was, it was a little not apples to oranges comparison when we're comparing counties versus cities. And so what um, the city of Spokane, my understanding is currently, will give up to $10,000 for signing bonus. Well, I asked Todd to do a little bit more um, work on the proposal and and i'll praise the sheriff's department as gary did earlier they've been working with us uh to keep everything in budget and and really really taking a hard look at their at their budget and they've come in what were they you shaved off about 1.4 million 1.4 and that included uh, an additional uh 64 thousand for uh, the concession of having the availability to go up to the ten thousand dollars, with some exceptions. So part uh, of the so let me just a second. Uh, but wasn't their original ask on the budget to be how much more than last year? Wasn't it five more? Uh, it was four million more. I think it was four million. So, so there's still three million over where they were last year. Two and a half. Okay. And uh, about 1.8 uh, or more of that was just due to salary increases, uh, step increases that were automatically programmed into the system. Okay. And and taking care of all their pool positions that those are all funded now in there. Right. And part of the discussion that we had is that, you know, realistically, some of these funded positions that, that are funded, even if they're never filled, Gary and his staff did a very good job of saying, let's just realistically look at what you could fill and what historically you probably won't be able to fill. And that's where some of these came from. So currently, right now, this is the proposal. They have two classifications of laterals. They have intermediate laterals. Those are the folks that have completed the academy but have less than two years of experience working independently. Part of the proposal is that they offer those people that have already gone through the academy, so there's, they've already spent the money or somebody spent the money to put them through, of offering up to $7,500 split into two payments with the second payment after their completion of the probationary period. In other words, you don't give them the second part of that up to $7,500 until you know that they're gonna make it through the probation. The other classification that they're dealing with right now is what they call a full lateral, and they've not only completed the law enforcement academy, they've got more than two years experience working independently in Washington State. So for those folks, which you could argue are the fully trained, ready to go people, that they would offer up to the $10,000 sign-in bonus that would be split into two payments. Same idea, if you don't make it through your probation, you know, we don't want to give you the, the second part of that. As of today, and I asked Todd to keep me in real time, they're, they're down to 22 commissioned positions and expect another six to leave in January due to the verb. Also, as of today, they have five potential laterals that are doing their ride-alongs right now to see if they're interested in working for Spokane County. All five of those are also doing ride-alongs with at least three other agencies. So the proposal is you'd have up to, for, yeah, for both of the different laterals, the first lateral group up to 
a $7,500 signing bonus. Doesn't mean they all get $7,500 up to. The second ones that are fully trained, that are the ones that they're riding around the cars right now, those you could go up to $10,000 split into two payments. I think from just a marketing standpoint and the trouble that we're having, it probably makes sense economically. It's within their budget. And I would, I would support the proposal if the board would support it. Thoughts? So, so yeah, so, so part of me is like, okay, the people that are coming and doing that, the second group that are already trained and all of that, I mean, they know what the salary is. Yes. So I kind of have a hard time going up to 10,000. I'd maybe go eight. Um, the other group, I, I think I'd probably go just a little bit less because again, they're, I'm just, you know, based on the numbers that I saw, yes, municipalities are offering the $10,000. If they're gonna go work for a municipality, they're gonna go work for a municipality versus a county. I mean, they're two different types of organizations. They're not exactly the same. So people are making a choice that I'm either gonna go work for the city and not gonna to get to have my own car because we're providing you know, the cars that they can take home and all that. I mean, there's differences. And so, I, I don't know, that's just my thought. I'm sure, not. Josh, your thoughts? Should people take their cars? I don't know on this one. Um, I don't know. I mean, Mary, Mary makes a good point. I mean, and I mean, being, being a, a police officer versus a sheriff deputy is very different. I mean, certainly in the settings of, uh, you know, of, of where you're patrolling, I mean, whether, whether it's an urban setting versus a rural setting. Um, I just, I don't know. I mean, if, if the cities are given the 10 grand and they truly are money motivated, um, the municipalities pay more too. Right. So it's like we're matching the signing bonus, but if money is their deciding factor, they're going to go with the the police department over the sheriffs every time because their salary will be higher as well. So I just I, I don't know. I, I don't know. What what are your thoughts, Al? I mean because because we, we, we can't match them on salary. So we're we're still in the hole you know, as, as far as what the offer is um, compared to a city, regardless. So yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah, we've never done really well trying to match the cities, uh, you know, on a pay scale, uh, especially the city of Spokane. Uh, so I wouldn't try to get into that race, but it's, it, I, I agree with Mary, it's a different kind of job being a sheriff deputy than it is a police officer with the city of Spokane. You don't have nearly the number of riots, you don't have all of the other, you know, uh, oversight, uh, you know, political environment to be accountable to. I mean, you know, with the sheriff, you're accountable to the sheriff and that's it. I mean, it's pretty clear line of uh, accountability and responsibility where with the city, um, you got seven city council members, a mayor and a police chief, and you got to make all of them happy. Good luck. So, um, uh, you know, but you know, if somebody's really motivated for money, they're going to go to the city regardless of how much pain there is and uh, just try and grind it out. What I was wondering is, what is the cost of training somebody from scratch versus a lateral hire is, I must, for some reason in my mind, but I could be wrong, it seemed to me that the cost for training was more expensive than the cost of uh, a signing bonus. But is that accurate or am I not sure. remembering it right? No, the cost, my recollection is the yeah. cost of training is much higher much than higher. This, much higher. Yeah. And, and that was one of the reasons that when when Jeff was still here, Tower, one of their proposals were to get him in the, they call it get him in the car faster, because what was happening is they would spend all this money and time, literally months, training them, put them in the car, they'd go to their first, you know, whatever, domestic violence or whatever, and they go, I don't want any part of this. Well, they said, well, hell, we've lost all this money and all this time. Put them in the car sooner so they can make better, if they're going to not do it, make it make it earlier so, we, you know, we don't lose somebody in the pipeline. The other thing that on a, trying to be competitive, because we obviously need to be competitive, I don't think we can compete with the city, like Al says, 
with their wages. But here's the nuance. We do have an urbanized customer and it's called the Valley. Yeah. And we do hire people that go into, and, and as you noticed in the news lately, with the shootings and things, they're starting to become a little more urbanized, you know, than they used to be. And, you know, this may not be the right amount of money or, or we could set it where we are, but I do think we need to be competitive. They, we've got to have a fighting chance. If these five people are riding around with us and two other people, we, it'd be good if we were somewhat competitive, at least have a chance to get these folks to come with us. Yeah, no, and, and I'm not against giving them some kind of signing bonus, but, but even Jerry, you know, when this came before us two months ago, I mean, you, you were hesitant to the $10,000 as well. I was. Um, you know, and so I'm, I haven't, I guess there wasn't enough evidence here today to make me think that I want to go to the $10,000 number. Um, you know, but I, I definitely want to do something. And, and definitely when I did my writer along i mean they talked about that that they were losing people they would spend all this time and it's like i want to say like 40 or fifty thousand dollars to get them through training and all of that before then they get into the car to do their ride-alongs and then yeah they were leaving so i mean so i i would you know have they changed their practices that they actually do ride-alongs to start with before they go to training so we're not spending all that money i mean i i don't know um and and yeah <laughs> For a two payment situation where they get part of it, of, you know, part of it, you know, when they sign on, and then the other, I would have almost like a one third, two thirds. Part of, uh, yeah, part of my, that's a good quote, you bring up a really good point, Mary. Here's part of what changed my mind a little bit about I was against going up to $10,000 because I was going to leave it at $7,500. And part of what changed my mind was when Gary and his folks were sitting down with the sheriff going over budgets, I was, I was more than happy that they were willing to visit with us about some of those positions that were going to be fully funded that really didn't have much of a chance of filling. So that, that was. So I guess that's part of the question though, too, is so how are, how are they on filling these positions? I mean, are they. He says currently they're 22. They're, and realistically, they're not going to they're not going to replace 20. Even if we have the money, they're not going to replace 22 positions. No. Not in the near future. It's just not going to happen. Right. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to help the sheriff to work with the sheriff department to right size realistically what your staffing level is going to be. We can't afford anymore to fund positions that aren't going to be filled. It ties up too much of our assets when we don't think there's a realistic chance that you're going to be able to fill those positions in the first place. And so is there anything to do this on a, you know, a basis of let's, let's do it for the next, you know, six months or one year just to see how it works, to see if we've got positions filled? Because as we know, based on today's environment, yeah, it's not as attractive to become a, a police officer or a sheriff's office. But a year from now, it could be a different story but is this something that we could say, you know, should be looked at you know, on an annual basis? I, I don't know. I don't know. I think, I, so, I think that's, if I may, I think that's an excellent idea. The, cur the current policy is limited to $3,500. That's what 3, it says. They can't, pardon me? 3000 3000 excuse me. So if we're going to go and change this, I like that performance matrix part of it. It says we'll go ahead and change the policy, but after six months or a year, the board says, come back and tell us how you're doing. Did it work? Did it make any difference? Yeah. If it made a difference, then I guess it was a good idea. If it didn't make any difference, then I guess it really didn't make much sense. I like that performance component to it. Can I offer another perspective that we might want to take into consideration? Um, we don't, the, all the cities are in the same situation we are We're looking to adjust their budgets for next year. And we know that a lot of them are talking about reducing funding for the police departments. I think the city of Seattle is already down like several million dollars. Uh, and so those, those people are going to be looking for other communities to go to. Um, and so uh, we might end up being the beneficiary of some of those decisions on the other side of the state, uh, not by design, but by default. They don't have anywhere else to go. So I'm, I'm just wondering if maybe we could 
kind of wait like 30 or 60 days and then make a decision uh, as to what we need to do to be competitive as those folks leave the west side. Now, the challenge is they're coming from the west side and do we really want them? Um, uh, you know, and so there is that part of the equation uh, that we might want to consider, but I just offer that up for consideration. I think another point you made, that's a good point. I think another point, Mary, that you made that's really good, and this is where the marketability part of it is. If it costs me $7,500 more to bring somebody into the fold and somebody already paid for their training, that's a, that's a good trade-off. That's, 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 just, that's just good business. And I know that everybody's is in the same pool uh, looking for the same folks, so. Right. I mean, that's why it's just the 75 versus the, you know, going from three to 7,500 to then 10,000, just, it's the 10,000 that I'm struggling with. Okay. Is, is really, you know, and, and again, is it, you know, you know, this is kind of one of those ebb and flow things. So it's like, I don't want us to be stuck because there may be a year where the sheriff needs more equipment that we don't have money for, but, and he's, he's fully staffed, you know, or people are wanting to become, you know, officers or deputies, it's, you know, are, are we putting ourselves, you know, I don't know, it's a, it's a legacy cost, if this is a big legacy cost, so I'd rather be able to look at it and, and know that it's working or not working. Yeah, and the other thing in being a good provider of services, as you folks know, that whatever we decide, there's a, a large portion of this is paid by our friends in the Valley. That, that part of their contract so but but we need to be very conservative with their funds too obviously because we're right. really providing the service but Al hit it right in the head this is this is not a good market period to be out looking for for law enforcement officers for a variety of reasons and I do think there's a like Al says there's a huge possibility not only from the west side California Portland you know it's not there may be some folks looking to to maybe move into a different environment. Yep. I just want to make sure we're competitive because the city of Spokane and our other wow. folks around here are doing the same doing the same thing we are trying to figure out how do I how do I attract these folks? Well, I think so, I think the, the the point Al was making is that there could be large layoffs of law enforcement around the country because of this push to defund the police or shift shift funding from what so there could be several law enforcement folks that you know it's not that they're looking to leave their aid their current agency it's that they are pushed out of their current agency so i mean i i don't know i i, I kind of think al al might have had a might have had a point there where he was saying you know is this something i mean you know in 30 60 days um you know we may have people banging on the door to get a job here because they're out of work. You know, is the, is the sign on bonus, will it be needed at a higher level than it currently is? So I don't know. I mean, the, the, the market could shift based on what other cities and counties do across the entire nation. So I, I, maybe, maybe. Well, I think the issue about up to, that was where we stressed that it had to be up to that it wasn't 7,500 or, or 10,000 is to capture that. In other words, if I've been laid off and I come out here and I'm interviewing with you, I may be willing to come to work here for no bonus. That's, why, that's, why, that's why it's up to, but on the right. other token, if I'm riding in a car today and I have two other suitors that I just rode a car in today or tomorrow, then all of a sudden that might be a little different. Maybe it will take a little up to something to get that person to come here. Right, reality is though, you're always gonna go up to the max because you you know that it's up to that so you're always going to ask for that as as an employee potential employee i'm going to i'm going to look at that policy and know that's that's what I'm targeting um so yeah it's hard to tell somebody i really want you but i can only pay 2500 uh you know when they know that they got 75 as a max maybe so, um so are you just to trying to uh, get closer on this. So what I hear Mary saying is she's comfortable up to 7,500 or is that, did I not hear that right? And so Josh, what's your comfort level? 
Yeah, I mean, I, I guess, I mean, I, I could do 7,500. Uh, again, I, I mean, I think we should make it clear that, you know, like Jerry just said, that it is up to, this is not a everybody gets 75. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I could do that. I, I certainly liked what, what we were discussing e earlier too about, you know, that it's paid out in two lump sums. I mean, where Mary even said, you know, one third up front, two thirds, you know, it, over you know whatever period of time later, um, you know I, I I like having a policy like that, not not having it up front, you know, or you know a hundred percent up front. So. Right. Okay. May I make a suggestion? Kind of take the best of all the really good ideas. I we we pay him we pay him in half as they said up to seventy five hundred dollars, but I just am zeroing in. I really like that performance matrix part of it. Would you, would the board consider saying, we're going to do this for, and then pick a thing, six months, a year, it doesn't make any difference. And we're going to review this. Because if you do this and you never review it, it just becomes the norm, whether it should or not. Yeah. And kind of going back to like Al says, we're going to find out in a, in a fairly short period of time what that market really looks like. And I think it would behoove the board to have a review in six months or a year and say, how did it work? Did it make any difference? What's the market look like? And I think it's, yeah. Six months. Six months? Yeah. Because then it, it, we make sure it happens and we're going to see if there is that shift in employment. Um, and we're going to see if we've filled some of these positions, you know, all of that. Commissioner Fritch? Yeah, sorry. And, commit, no. and commissioners, I just sent you some data on one of our questions to the Sheriff's Department is well, how many laterals? have you brought over since 2015. So you'll see we brought over five in 15, five in 16, five in 17, nine in 18, nine in 19, and three so far year to date through October and 20. So we're, we got some baseline data. We're also looking into the retention right. of these 36 individuals that we brought over as laterals mm -hmm. since 15. So we'll get that baseline data then the, can you actually find right. out? What, so it's great to have that, and then find out what the actual cost of training is. Yeah, so I think that's the other piece. Is if we're going after laterals, then what's the the training for a new person, and how long are they staying? Are are we retaining them or not? As well, you know, just just to get the full picture of it. Yep, we'll do it. Okay. Thanks. So we got clarity on this one. I have my marching orders, thanks. Okay, so um, I believe, but correct me if I'm wrong here, I believe all three of us have been notified about uh, the health district uh, meeting on Thursday at three o'clock. I have had a conversation, I have not seen emails to know that it's in writing. Is it in writing? I've received an email uh, from Michelle uh, saying okay. that we've set it for, uh, well, somebody said it, it wasn't me. Uh, <coughs> didn't know whether one of you two were involved in that, but I got an email saying it's gonna be at three o'clock uh, on, um, on Thursday. Uh, it'll be a Zoom uh, meeting and uh, the, uh, each, each one of the individuals were given 30 minutes uh, to make their case. Uh, good or bad, and then it will be up to the board to decide what we want to do. If we want to move into executive session, we can, or we can just do it publicly. Uh, that will be up to the board to decide. But uh, from my understanding, that's the latest uh, with regard to uh, the hearing. So, having now knowing that we've got a date. Uh, is there any desire uh, from the board standpoint to put out a press release saying whatever we want to say, or do we want to just leave it alone and let the health district continue to carry uh, this uh, uh, messaging uh, through Thursday? So I only bring it up, not campaigning for it, uh, not trying to push it one way or the other, just don't want to have this is the last time we're going to meet before Thursday. So mm -hmm. if there's anything that we felt like we wanted to say, this is the time to say it or not. Well, I, I don't know if that meeting has been noticed yet. 
Okay. Yes. Um, I think, yes, there was an attorney client privileged email warning that looked like that discussed that. Okay, it wasn't communicated to me that way. So, uh, okay, well, then we'll just okay. leave it up and to I, the district to communicate that out then. Yeah, and I, I was a part of a, a meeting with the health district with the attorney on discussions of discussions. <laughs> And so okay. to say what that is. Okay. Yeah, because we want to make sure Gina, because if the three of you are going to be at a meeting, obviously that's be noticed. And yeah. so the sooner we know the better, I guess. Yeah, I mean if we don't if, <laughs> if it's if it's not given to us by what uh, no later than tomorrow morning, uh, we can't be there. Yeah, Gina may want to reach out to to maybe, maybe Ann. Or yeah. Michelle. Ann or Michelle and get that. Because it's, it's, at this point, it's attorney client uh, information. Because okay. um, I, I mean, it's a 24 hour notice, correct? Right. Okay. Yeah, minimum. So it'd be Wednesday at by three o'clock would be if it's going to happen on Thursday. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. All right. So nothing said, nothing heard. Nothing's okay. Very good. Anything else for the good of the cause? Uh, all right. That's all uh, I got. What's that? I said that. That no. That's, that's all I got. Okay. So it's no. You had your chance. Well, I have another one. This is this is. I I had three meetings in a row. I I've got a backlog now. <laughs> I have a question for the board. This is just a scheduling because of the the fact that. Uh, you guys don't meet every week in November. So the question is, do you want to meet for CARES discussions on Monday, November the 16th from 9 to 10? That would be prior to the budget hearing that Gary is setting up. Or Monday, and or Monday the 23rd from 9 to 11. The concern is we're going to get these CARES requests coming in that Carrie's doing a really good job of processing, but you guys have to hear them and make decisions and we're going to, we don't have that many weeks in November that you're going to meet. So, okay, so I'm sorry, what are you asking again? Which dates? Yeah, so we, we are already meeting on the 16th. That's WASAC week. Oh, but, yeah. but it's later. But I thought we had already, okay. I thought we had already had the conversation that since WASAC is going to be vid, uh, virtual and uh, that we were going to go ahead and meet on that Monday. So if that's changing now, I, I just need to know that. But oh, I just, I just it was my understanding that we were going to be meeting on Monday. So the board of directors are meeting virtually starting at noon. Right. Monday the 16th. So we have the morning is available. Right. That we're good then. The yeah, morning is available. Right. So on the 16th, do we want to start at nine or wait until after um, Gary's budget? Well, I'd start at nine. Yeah, start at nine. Okay. So on the 16th, we'll start at nine o'clock. Then when is the budget hearing scheduled to start? Ten. Then we'll go into the hearing at 10. When the hearing is over, continue whatever meet, uh, business we have for the 16th. And then on the 23rd, we'll meet just from 9 until no later than noon, maybe less, predominantly to deal with CARES and any other last minute business. And then the last meeting on November is going to be on the 30th. Yep. That's just wow. a regular meeting. We got her down. Anybody man. object to that or? Nope, so I was looking at my calendar. No, I think that's I mean, it is what we've, we've got to do. Okay, very good. Anything else? Nope, final call. <laughs> All right, so it's now 2.47 and we've completed all the business come before the board and we are adjourned. Thank you. No.